Okay. I am going to call this school board work session February 8, 2022 to order. And at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Mrs. Cook, who will then, from there, introduce our guests. Oh, oh okay. Um, welcome, everyone. Um, the, uh, we have, as you can tell, Andrea Messina is online. She's joining us via Zoom, so she's going to be part of it today. Um, I'm also going to introduce, you know, Bill Vogel. He was here um, at, when we had our first meeting and has been busy working since we were here. And John Reichert, who was um, mentioned by Andrea, that does a lot of, has an HR background. And so um, today we get to, to meet him as well and have him be part of the conversation. So welcome, both of you. And um, Stacy, uh, we have Dr. Stacy Byer with us also, and we appreciate you being here. So thank you. So I'm going to turn it over to y'all, and we can move forward. Thank you very much. Uh, we have been busy since the last meeting, and uh, we have our agenda all set forth. And uh, we're going to go ahead and start uh, with John talking about the uh, website portal, uh, which is our first item on the agenda. And uh, we'll certainly interact with Beth and other staff people on that. So, John, why don't you get started? Right. Thank you, Dr. Vogel. And my apologies for having to miss the first meeting. Um, but that was something I just couldn't avoid, and I'm very happy to be here. I, uh, I am happy to be here because I navigated I-4 this morning, so uh, it was good to get here uh, early. Yeah. So, so sometimes it just it, good things happen. Um, I do uh, know that Ms. Messina had provided Beth with some items that we think would be appropriate to be on your website portal as the search for the next superintendent gets underway. Um, uh, there, there are things such as our timeline, once the board kind of gives um, a little uh, uh, solidness to the timeline, uh, that certainly can go up. And that just kind of starts informing your public uh, and your moms and dads about the search process, how things will flow, and we'll talk about the timeline in a, in a little bit. Uh, certainly it would be a, a nice place to put, once we set up our community forums and our focus groups, for that to go up again to keep everyone informed uh, the online link to the online survey uh, that would certainly be there to kind of guide the, the employees and the members of the public to the online survey uh, and as applications begin to come in once we post the job then we at, at your direction can post those applications to that site so your community and your employees are aware of who's applying, uh, the number of persons. So it really can turn out to be a good, uh, great PR site for your community and your employees and, of course, your students as well. I don't know if uh, Beth has anything else to add. I know she has a, a, a beginning site up. And I really do look at the search portal and also the timeline. Uh, if you kind of go back a few years, remember the old Polaroid cameras, you could take a picture and, you, and the, the paper came out and you had to kind of wave it a little bit and it came into focus uh, as minutes went along. I think the website portal and our timeline is something that it just kind of grows as the search goes on. It's modified as kind of a living document. So uh, if uh, Beth has any update that she would like to give. That, that's absolutely uh, the truth right now. It is just a very simple website that just has the dates of the upcoming meetings. You can see it up there. Um, if you click on February or click on January. Mm -hmm. We did put the um, information in the press release that originally went out um, announcing the search <coughs> and those things. So our media uh, members are aware of it. It's just pcsb.org slash superintendent. And then there is a tab for superintendent search info, which you'll see at the very top of the left uh, there in the gray. So uh, once we do have more information in the dates and uh, times and locations for the community meetings, once there is a job description that's finalized, all of those things, we will uh, post those uh, right here and, of course, continue to share that information with our media and on our social media. And Andrea, yes, thank you. She did provide us lots of sample documents from other superintendent searches around the country, so we'll be using those as a model as well. And I'm assuming we'll bring those documents or we'll share those documents before we post them. Sure. Right, and as, uh, as you may know, Dr. Vogel, Ms. Messina, and I do kind of work as a team and we kind of have our little assignments we have to keep up with. So 
I'm kind of the portal <laughs> contact, and certainly, uh, Beth, I'll be in communication with you as we progress and the picture becomes clearer and we can post uh, uh, accordingly. Ms. Messina, anything? No, I just really appreciate Beth was right on it. She jumped on it. And um, as you mentioned, we have some resource documents for uh, Beth to use for any number of activities throughout the search to adjust to Pinellas County's priority <laughs> branding and things like that. So there are a number of things that will continue to roll out and everything that does will land right here. <coughs> Thank you. Any questions? Excellent. Okay. Uh, Andrea and uh, Stacy, I believe you're going to talk a little bit about the uh, survey, the progress we're making on that. Sure. Andrea. Yes, and I'll turn it over to Dr. Byer, but I do want to ask um, Dr. Byer, do you want me to go ahead and display that up here, the I draft? I brought copies for everybody, so okay. um, we can pass out. So <coughs> let me um, start. I'm going to check one for myself. And one of these might have my name on the top of it, but it has no writing. I just accidentally did it. Um, let me start by saying this is 100% a draft. So it's just a place that we are getting started. We thought it would be easier to react to something in writing uh, than to, you know, just sort of like start by brainstorming. Um, after we had our last meeting, uh, Andrea and I had an opportunity to sit down with the research company. Uh, we are working with an organization called um, Research Data Services, I believe is the name. They're a very reputable firm out, um, out, of, uh, out of Tampa. Uh, they have done a lot of work for municipalities and counties. I'm not actually sure if they've ever done any work for school boards, but they bring a real level of expertise around survey design. There's a whole science behind how do you create a survey so that you're not biasing responses and things. So they're bringing that expertise and lens to, um, to the conversation. Uh, just a, a quick shout out to Andrea. Um, it's been a very collaborative relationship in terms of thinking about how do we kind of scaffold all these community engagement activities so that they don't feel disparate when we go out to the community, but that they're very complementary. Um, to each other. So also because of her past experience in doing these searches, she helped to inform some of the information that you see. So it wasn't just us spitballing and thinking what might need to be in a survey. It was really informed by other communities, but this is really the time for us to, you know, kind of take a look at the survey. Let me give you some high level overview. We have intentionally kept it simple because uh, the shorter the survey, the better chance we have of getting results, people to respond. So I think in total it's five or six questions total. We also had a lengthy conversation with her. Um, three of the questions have choices, as you can see here. And, and we'll go through the individual questions in a moment. Um, the, it's an opportunity to kind of bring focus. Uh, we're, all, we're going to ask people to, to rank, but trying in the short what's really driving the design part of the design of the survey is the short time frame we have to collect the information so we ideally they would really like us to launch friday by like have everything wrapped up and let's get it going in order to give enough time for people to get responses back by the deadline that they have set as tuesday february 22nd so the quicker we can can turn this around the better um, one thing about uh, the choices is that they will reorder every time someone opens. So they're deliberately not in alphabetical order and they will reorder every time because one of the things in surveys is people, I guess, have a tendency to start at the top and then, you know, like, so if you keep reordering it, you're giving the opportunity for greater fairness amongst the choices. So that is something that their survey um, software can do uh, for us. We really focused on um, uh, the, as you can see, there are the questions that we focused on. One is to, to be able to disaggregate, not only collectively, how does everybody respond, but then how do teachers, how did parents respond to the different questions that you can begin to see the input from, from different folks. Um, we added both former um, administrators, they may respond differently than current parents, but you know, one of the, we'll come back in just a moment to just say, is there anybody missing from this group? Uh, the next question on the survey really um, focuses on the strength of Pinellas County Schools. Kind of like, what do we, what do we not need to worry about? What do we need to celebrate? What's going on that people are super proud, proud of? 
I think that's a great selling point for um, you know potential candidates for um, for the superintendent role. If we keep going, the um, next question is, what are some of the biggest challenges? Uh, and again, these are just random things we can add, we can take away. Um, we are, in both of these first two questions, we are um, asking them to pick. So we also don't, we don't want them to order the whole list. We kind of want to say, focus in on what do you think are the top three <coughs> to five, we can decide that today, challenges <coughs> or strengths of the school district so that we can really begin to dig deep on, um, on the information that we get from the respondents. On the next question, it is um, the leadership qualities of the new, what, what leadership qualities should the new superintendent possess? I think that's true. Uh, go ahead. So with the, with the choices, you said they were, um, was there a methodology used to pick them? Were they from previous? They Did were, they align with our strategic plan? How, how did these options come to be? They were from previous um, surveys that the FSBA has done in the past. So we just, just as a starting point, mm -hmm. um, started. It was a much longer list than I probably could have come up on my own. <laughs> And then just let me just do the overview and then we can maybe dig in on the questions If you can keep going go to the next questions after the superintendent um, We do provide a box um, that is for other for people who just want to provide open-ended You know input if they didn't see what they wanted to say in the questions as we provided them and and what we would do is basically give you just like verbatim what did people say and, you know print it out we won't um, edit it per se. And then uh, the last two questions are, um, you know, what area of the county is your or your children's schools located? And then what is your home zip code so that we can get an idea of where, um, of where people responded from? And then, let me just, uh, I'm sorry, one second, the uh, computer shut down. I wanted to see. Is anything else? Uh, the only other information that's probably relevant is the survey will scale on a computer or a mobile device so people can respond from, from either places. Andrea, did you have anything else you wanted to add before we uh, went through? Um, no, you know, I, other than you mentioned it, and I just want to reemphasize these questions are the same questions that we will be asking in our focus groups and in our community forums. So that way all of the content will feed in and you'll have the aggregate from all of these resources. And so once the survey company collects all the information, they will be drafting a report that we would then present to you as the, as the school board. I guess, yeah. I guess I wonder, Ms. Messina, if in the past, typically, you know, you would have your focus group first and tease out these options to be included in the survey post focus group. And I wonder if, did these come from prior focus groups or are these in place because they've been most frequently seen as issues of strength or issues of weakness? Yeah, that's that's exactly where we pulled these items. But that's also why we're why we are bringing it to you. Number one, we want approval for the questions. But number two, we want you to say maybe that's the wrong item. Maybe we want to change one or two or three or five. Um, but these are the ones that typically come up when we've done searches in other districts. So I went back to look at our last several. Um, uh, districts that we did searches in, and these were the items that came up most commonly. And just a, a, a comment on that to support that. Uh, we usually will run the survey concurrently with our focus groups and our, our community forums. 
it, it works out well because we we kind of promote the survey at our our forums also and it, it seems to have worked out well the survey will actually reach more and different people than those that are in your focus groups or show up at your community meetings. You'll probably have several thousand responses to the survey and several hundred in the community forum. So it really is a volume um, uh, aggregator through this survey platform. Um, looking at the survey that I'm responding from a perspective of, is it possible to include students? Because we do have students who could fill out the survey. Right. Yeah, we have former students, but we don't have current. Um, I see parent of a oh, parent former of a student. student, it's not yeah. students. Not yeah, we could absolutely include students. Yeah, we had talked about doing that. Yep. I don't want to speak for Dr. Byer, but I don't think that's a problem. Do you, Dr. Byer? I, one of my questions at the end will be, um, how are we going to get the survey out? So let's just, I can put a pause in that and we can ask that question with regards to, to some of these populations. Mm -hmm. You know, I see some of the things on here that aren't, um, pertinent to what we're doing right now. For example, growth and rezoning. First of all, we're built out, so growth is not an issue. And we have so much choice, we don't do rezoning. Um, if we do, I think it's so far in the future that we that it's not something that I would say is an immediate, immediate concern. But I would like to see some of the things that are on our strategic plan being put in here as maybe some of the challenges. As we're working forward, are they priorities? For, for the district, um, and even our, some of these are strengths. Mm -hmm. So I think we could maybe even go through, I mean like graduation rates, that ties directly in with our strategic plan. Uh, you know, parent involvement, um, you know, district rates, I and mean, that's all part of it too. So I, if we could just kind of go through and check and, and make sure that it is kind of covered, and maybe staff can help out with that mm -hmm. to just look at it. You raise an interesting, uh, this is a comparison I didn't do, but I I almost wonder if the two lists could be uh, similar, maybe with some additions, mm -hmm. because um, you know, strength, you know, pe some people might perceive it to be a strength, some people some might perceive it to be a So we can, I can do that. Yeah. Is there somebody who can inform for me from the strategic plan what what additions there should be? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. We could do that. Uh, Ms. Bell is right behind you. She operates and oversees our strategic plan and works with all divisions. I think it'll much more personalize this survey to our community and to the elements that um, we're interested in growing. Not that some of these other generic ones that are, are not important, some may still stay. I would mm -hmm. suggest that, yeah. but like Mrs. Cook said about the the growth or rezoning, um, you know, we, we, we much rather okay. have a more um, relevant topic. You know, so we can, we, Stella, I, I think you would be happy to do that or, or think about yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> you will be happy to do that, correct? <laughs> She's already done it. And I think if it parallels our strategic plan, our community is going to feel very connected yeah, to it. Because we've spent a lot of time sharing that with them. So uh, the, the only cause, I have no idea, if it's 5 or 20, <clears throat> is um, we might just need we'll keep to keep it the same way. Yeah, we don't yeah, want try to bigger. Yeah. For example, we discussed at the board meeting today the importance of this board on early literacy and early childhood education and as being a, a really important element of this board. And um, I think it should be on there, mm -hmm. um, you know, if it's personally. And, Support us, too. Yeah. Bill has his That's a, a practice that we recommend. Normally, at this point, uh, we, we it's very nice. We can get a staff person designated to go ahead and look through it and, and make those adjustments, and then maybe send it back to the board members individually if anybody has a question, or send it back to the superintendent, and those modifications could be made. But this just gives you an idea of some of the areas. So. We, we like to try to tie everything to the strategic plan 
as we work through the process, when we get down to the qualities that we're looking for, and even then we get to interview questions, we all tie all that to the strategic plan. So I think this is a good way to start through it. Good. 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 We'll get that done ASAP. Yeah. Yeah. Nicole? And, and I have to go back to something you said, Dr. Byer, about consistency a little bit between them, or if there mm -hmm. should be some, like it says morale, but then on the other one it says employee morale. So mm -hmm. which, which Matt, you know, how, mm -hmm. how are we defining them, or yeah. I don't know, if those, that the terminology be consistent, because I might see it as a strength or a witness, mm -hmm. weakness, and Definitely. just to consider, I'm sure Jen will look, Ms. Dull will, that'll, those flags will be raised for her too. <laughs> That's a good point. I, I do have a question. If we really want to get this out by Friday, then um, Dr. Byer is going to have to work with staff to kind of get those edits to re better reflect the strategic plan within the next day or two. And then we would need feedback uh, prior to Friday to get that out. I wonder if the board would feel comfortable either having the board chair or I know you've designated Ms. Cook to be your superintendent search liaison. Could we get either one of them to be the board set of eyes so that we don't have to bring it back before the four, full board so that we can go ahead and move on this? Uh, Madam Chair, so I mean, the statement was it was all going to come back to the board. Any meeting then that Mrs. Cook and Jen would have would have to be open in the sunshine. So you do have another work session next Tuesday. So I don't know if that's too late to bring this all back um, or you have a special meeting just for this one purpose, if you'd like. So the issue with next Tuesday is um, in order to meet the timeline, unless we're making adjustments on the back, then the survey's open for a week or less or maybe just a week. So they just need time to be able to compile the report to stay stay in progress. She was really pushing for us to try to get it out. I think ideally, she, Andrea, didn't she say she wanted the survey open for two, try to do two and a half weeks, which two today weeks. is two, just two weeks. Yeah, she wanted it for two and a half weeks. And so that's, that's um, if we brought it back next week, which we can do, it's just going to adjust the schedule a little bit, which again, we can do. We just need to bring that to your attention. So if we did it on Tuesday, we, it would be two weeks then instead of two and a half weeks. No, if you did it on Tuesday, it's only one week because the deadline is February 22nd. If we could extend the deadline by another week, then we can do two weeks. Because we have okay. found with searches that the longer they are, the less response we get. And so the shorter period of time. I don't know if that's everywhere, but it works better here. Um, can I just clarify? I mean, the purpose of this survey, collecting that information, having the community meetings, collecting that information is to inform our session the week of March 7th, right? As we right. finalize, work on, finalize the, the job description and the qualifications. So I guess, as, you know, as long as we have the information, I mean, we certainly don't want it on March 7th, but, you know, sometime in advance of that, I don't know that it has to close on the 22nd, but I'm sure maybe the company has to produce a report and that takes mm -hmm. some time, right? And all the things. Yeah. So when, when does the survey need to close? I think really understanding that should be is John, important. John had it. Uh, on our uh, draft timeline, mm -hmm. uh, some, just some dates that I put in for cons consideration was to run it from February the 14th, which is next Monday. And of course, we certainly could change that to the 15th or 16th, and then have it close on the 25th. That would give you about a week and a half, close to two weeks. And then that information during the week of February the 28th could be sent out to board members, that compiled information. Uh, and then you would have that in time for the March 7th meeting, where we use a lot of this data and what we collect from community forums and focus groups to kind of have you make, you know, that make some decisions based on that input. Yeah, that would work. And it's also very early in the morning, very early in the morning that we're meeting. <laughs> and so you would actually have Tuesday also because our decisions would be finished by 930. Right. So then, then on our draft timeline, I'll just change those survey dates from February 15th through February the 25th. 
And that would give you about a week and a half, close to two weeks. Mm -hmm. yeah. So on the 15th, the information would go to the company providing the survey. Because right. then they'll have to, I don't know if they'd already have the stuff in and then just tweak it, but we would be making, we would be looking at it in the morning of the 15th. Okay. Yeah, I think what would be helpful is if, um, I'm not sure what's allowed, so I'll just throw out ideally. If we could get feedback to make some tweaks so that we could bring you back a final version of what we think the survey is going to look like and then make any you know super necessary changes on that meeting so that they can go in and make final edits and get it launched. Um, yeah, that, that sounds great. I mean, you can work directly with Jen as long as it comes back to the full board and the, the board makes the decision. Yeah, and we could tweak it on the morning of the 15th yes. if necessary. You brought a draft already, Dr. Byer, so mm -hmm. bring another draft. Mm -hmm. okay. A suggestion, we can have this the first agenda item on the 15th before we start the pre-search. And then, we, then we'll, yeah, do, be good. we'll do that. Um, mm -hmm. One thing that will happen here, it will get very tight, just so you're aware, up through March 7th. Because what we try to do is look at all the data. and. What we collect is really non-scientific information. So we'll do everything we can to summarize, for example, the qualifications and then the qualities that you might want to advertise. We'll give that to the board so the board can tweak it and do what they want to. If, I've always felt it's better if we try to start the process with the board and then the board looks at it and adjusts it that way rather than just you know, and, and that's worked out pretty well. But there's, it's going to be pretty tight getting all that information to you. We'll get that as quick as we can when we get all the information in. Because we may not be finished with the forums until the 28th. So we'll be... Um, so between the 28th and the 7th, getting it all together. Right. So we may not be able to get it a full week. But we'll do everything we can to go ahead and get it to you. Okay. Because you wanted to have the survey open at the same well, time that the forums. We'd like it. We'd like to do that. But it, even if we don't, when we get all the, the uh, forum results in, we still have to compile all those and consider all that information and put all that together. So right. we'll do so, everything we can to get it to you. So what you're, you're saying is we may see all the information for the first time on the seventh, not receiving it a week ahead like we do all the materials. Right. You, okay. you're, you're not going to receive it on the seventh. We'll get it to you before that, but it may not be the full week. Okay. We'll get it to you as soon as we get it. We'll just, we'll just crunch the, as quick as we can get it out. Mm -hmm. But it may not be a full week just because of the time of we're compressing everything. It looks like it's okay with everybody. So. Yes. Okay. okay, good, thank you. Sounds good. I have a comment about the school location. Um, just can we ensure we have all the locations that a school can possibly be, like Lillman included? I'm not sure of all the cities, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. just make sure that we capture all the cities. All the municipalities. One is where your school is located, and the One other is home, home zip code. Yeah, we can look through there and make sure we have all of the municipalities. Where we have a school, we'll have that municipality. This link is it on there? Well, I think what will happen though is, yeah, as soon as the staff Jen gets the gets this draft done, you'll send that to us and the board members ahead of time. As soon as you get that done, so they'll have that prior to the 15th too. It's not going to be a week. We have <laughs> it won't be a week, but we'll get that as soon as you, she'll get that to you as soon as we can, and you'll have time to look at it before the 15th, so you're not going to receive it for the first time on the 15th either. Okay. Uh, can I ask a question about the municipalities? They told us that these are the Pinellas municipalities. It, um, this actually was a suggestion that they made. Um, are you saying that is Leoman its own city? I don't know. No, it's not incorporated. It's not incorporated, but they're the school. Well, so how do you? Eastlake Gas School. Yeah, that's not a municipality either. So Lelman is 
St. Petersburg. So St. Petersburg is there. East Lake is Tarpon, so Tarpon is So when is people there. say Lillman, they say, not to harbor on this, they say Lillman, Kenneth City. Okay, you, so then they would mark Kenneth City. Instead of saying the area, you might say what, because this district <laughs> is so unique, mm -hmm. you might say what municipality yeah. is, your, is your, your child's school located. Okay. So this way people don't get bent out of shape if they right. don't see a town or wheelman because yes. uh, it's not a municipality. Okay. Because some are unincorporated. Okay. I will. A lot, a lot of them are <laughs> unincorporated. <laughs> and, uh, all of Palm Harbor. Yes, yeah, part of the county. Still, Still part of the county. Right, but people might not know which one to pick. Mm -hmm. well, you don't want them to feel left out, though, if they don't see it. We've been in Wyoming. They get chipped all the time. They do. <laughs> they do. I'll leave it there. Okay. Keep their citizens like that. Oh, Anything else with either. the survey? <laughs> Uh, I do have one more question, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, so one question the survey company asked us was distribution. And um, we can either give them, we can do a hybrid, so let me start by saying that. So they can give us a link that the school district pushes out to students, parents, school board, um, I'm sorry, uh, teachers, administrators. We, we can give them a list that they upload and then they push the survey out, maybe with a note from the, you know, the school district saying that you're going to be receiving this, please watch out. The reason why they do the latter is uh, because there's greater distance between and, and maybe a sense of trust that you can't track down if it's not coming from the school district. I will say it is easier if we just send out a link. And we can include that language that says your responses are going directly to this research company, you know, no unidentifiable, all that. Um, but I, I don't know who to work through, who, and who can, who can get, I know you all can get, um, everyone who works for the school district, what about parents? Can we push this out either on text or um, through email? Okay. And then the student question came up. It, it, you know, at what level does this need to go, or how will students get it? Are we just including them in case they happen to get it? So, I'm sorry, Dr. Byer, but let me back up a little oh, bit. Sure. We, we would need an agreement to be signed with whoever this company is in order to share personally identifiable student information, including parent email and student email addresses. Okay. So maybe for those, we so keep them in house. Yeah. Or. Uh, I mean, whatever the board wants, but I'm just weighing in that we yeah. should not be giving out parent email addresses to the private company. Yeah. I think it's okay if the if the school district pushes it out to all of your distribution lists, and then I I personally think it's incumbent on me and my board to try and push it out to as many other organizations, especially from the community perspective. But I, you know, I think it's possibly okay to also say, you know, maybe in the survey, please share this with others that you think should be in Pinellas County, who you think should be giving input, and, mm -hmm. and as individual school board members, you know, you can push it out to churches and um, those groups. So any list that you all have, if we get you the link and the language, you can push, you'll push it out. That's what we'll tell the research company. Okay. And it will be on the portal as well. Correct. Correct. Yeah. And so, um, if I can work with Beth's team to figure out like a, a short kind of communications plan for the cadence of how often we'll remind people and get the survey out. Okay, that was my only other, that's my list. Uh, I think, Dr. Byer, I think that's really, uh, I think that, that would be perfect the way you want to do it, but I think one thing that's really important is we stress that the results are going to a private company and it's, it, the results will be confidential. Um, you know, I think we can use that same language. I think results will be anonymous. Anonymous, not confidential. Not confidential. The results will be anonymous. Thank you. And Thank we, you. And we have. We're finishing up our district-wide survey for all stakeholders right now. We have that type of wording that Perfect. is administered by an outside company. We have all of those Good. processes in place. Good. I'll get that language from from yeah. Jen so we can include it. Okay. That's all for me. Alrighty. Anything else with the? Okay. Alrighty. 
So now we go down to the con uh, community forums. Yes. Um, Dr. Vogel? Were, yes, thank you, uh, Andrew. Uh, been working with Kathy almost daily. Uh, we're uh, set. Our, our first uh, focus group, our two first focus groups are tomorrow. One at 8 o'clock with the district uh, individuals here at the office starting at 8. And then we're back at 3.30. The, the 8 o'clock one will be face-to-face. -face. The 3.30 one will be with principals and assistant principals, and that will be done uh, through Teams or Zoom. Um, teams are working with Beth on that. And uh, uh, we have the uh, uh, questions, uh, essentially the same three questions uh, that we'll be asking. Uh, the uh, the participants uh, they're the same ones that are on the uh, on the uh, survey that are going out so we'll be able to get consistency with information a couple of other things that we do on the in-person uh, survey uh, when we're with a group we then ask people to rank the qualities uh, as well as the qualifications we have a ranking system because of covid we'll probably do all that individually uh, we'll be working with Beth on how we can do that uh, through teams, but we've got a way to do that also. We also are in person, and, and we'll figure out a way to do it. We, we have note cards. We, if there's anybody that would like to suggest someone uh, to apply for superintendent, or they, they, they might give us a name of someone they think might be a good superintendent that we, we should contact, we contact those people also. So uh, we do get some feedback from, the, uh, from those people internally. Uh, and also community leaders on that also. So uh, we'll work away, work out a way we can do that too. So we're ready to go tomorrow. I'll be working with Kathy on getting all of the other dates. And I believe we have the schools all set. We have the schools and the dates, yeah. Okay, good. Great. Uh, do you want to run through sure. the schools we're going to go to? Yeah. Just share it with the book. Yeah, the dates if we have those two. We'll, and we'll add those to the calendar, to the timeline. Once we, once we have all those, I'm going to summarize that community involvement uh, sheet that we handed out the last time so you can post that on the website with all the community involvement opportunities that we have. So the community forums, the first one will be held at Pinellas Park High School Media Center on February 23rd. Um, the second one will be Countryside High School Media Center on February 24th. And the third would be the St. Pete High School Cafeteria on February 28th. And we were just waiting to get can you repeat those? I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Pinellas Park High School Media Center, 223. Countryside High School Media Center, 224. And St. Pete High School Cafeteria, 228. And we were just wanting to get the boards okay on those dates. What today. we're going to do is back up the, we'll have the form, the focus groups the same day. Yes. On, on the earlier in the day, uh, virtually. Through teams, right. and then we'll have the the the, forum, the community forums will actually be in person. Okay. So the staff focus groups. Kathy, did you, I'm sorry. Did you say what time those are going? Yeah. We did not finalize the time yet. We were talking about that today. We're uh, we like to start maybe at six o'clock. Six o'clock for the community groups, and uh, we'll work the time for the. Uh, for the staff. We're going to try to work something out because middle school teachers are late. So we'll work the times out for the teachers the and the support people uh, also. So we'll work those times out, which, which fits their a time when they can participate. So are we all good with 6 o'clock on these dates for the forums? For the community, for the community forums, yeah. Mm -hmm. Knowing that the staff will be yet to come. So the, we okay. proposed the instructional staff um, on 2.23 from 3.30 to 4.30 because we weren't sure what time we were going to hold the community forum. And the support staff would be on 2.24. These are both virtual. So the communications team will actually go to the school where the forum is that evening and set up the virtual meeting. So we could do it at 4. We could do it at 3.30 to 4.30. We could do it at 4 to 5. But 3.30 middle school is still in session. Mm -hmm. So if we're asking for instructional staff, we won't get middle school. Okay. So do we want to... So what time are they in? 4.20? So 
that when they're out of four, you know, four, four ten. ten, four ten, four fifteen, just say four twenty. Okay, time to get down the car lines. Yeah. Oh, or seven. No. <laughs> right. So we said <laughs> if we did four thirty, what does that do to your? If we did four thirty to five thirty, we'll do it. That works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 4.30 to 5.30 yeah. and then a 6 o'clock start time yeah. for the in-person. Okay. okay. And support will be at 2.24 and what time do we want to start that? 4.30 one? to 5.30 also. Okay, great. Right. right, and the same covers the, the focus groups on that. So I think we're looking good there. Uh, it's really been a pleasure working with Beth and Kathy and all of your team uh, in, in getting this book moving so quickly. So thank you. Okay. Um, what, I'm sorry. What, yes, what did you say was tomorrow? Tomorrow we're going to meet with the district level people that work in this building. Administrative tomorrow. team. Administrative team here. As a focus group. As a yes. focus group. And then at 3.30 we're going to okay. be back and we're going to meet with principals Principal. and assistant principals. So I think we, we have the, all those areas covered. We're doing that virtually. We're doing that virtually, correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And we, exactly. We're, and we, we're not involved in that. Okay. Correct. Correct. So we're not invited. That these are the meetings that I think you might recall. I suggested probably we don't want you there because we'll have more honest input, or there'll be a higher level of trust if they, if if board members are not there. We don't want you all to be accused of trying to control anyone's input and that's not i know what you would be doing but i also know how people start to be concerned sometimes so we're just trying to keep you all above reproach so forgive me if i got this communication and missed it but have we already pushed out the information for tomorrow mm -hmm. yes no. it just seems yeah. so soon and the others are not until towards the end of the month so i don't know why there's such a gap there Okay. But the, but the, the, the people here know about it. Yeah. <clears throat> Those were the dates that um, FSBA had available and that we had, you know, we worked together with them. Great. Okay. As long as everyone knows about it. Okay. Yeah, the ones, uh, I think, Kathy, you sent those out a while back, the ones for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. Last oh, week. Good. Last week, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. Good. Mm -hmm. Am I allowed to ask a question? Mm -hmm. Are the community forums virtual or are they in person? In person. Okay. I misheard. And we're, Bill, we're actually also trying to come up with a uh, virtual option, correct? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We have that. Yeah. Right. Okay. To be clear, we wanted to be able to provide both. Right. At each one of the sessions? <sighs> correct. Okay. And Madam Chair, if I could, basically any employee can come to any community forum as well. Because okay? if our middle school teachers get a little backed up or something with a parent conference, then they can certainly come that evening. Absolutely. Are the focus group ones that are the 4.30 to 5.30, are those also going to be hybrid? No. No, those are going to be virtual. Yes, virtual. 100% virtual for focus groups. Right. Hybrid for community groups. All staff, employees, everybody's welcome to come to any of them at any time as community yes, members, sir. as employees. It's all so there's lots of different opportunities Correct. to participate. Mm -hmm. Anything else in any of those areas? We, we passed the website portal, but I was wondering if we could make it clear about the superintendent search on the main screen. Mm -hmm. Whether, okay. Yes, once we had a little more um, content, yes, perfect. Definitely put it on the, on the rotator. Thank you. So I now, be able to click on it. Because I now know I can ask a question. Let me ask one more. Would it make sense at the end of the survey to advertise the community forums? Like, please join us. That's a great idea. Please join us at these. Mm -hmm. <laughs> with the dates and times. Good. Yeah, with the dates and times. Okay. Why would we do that if we've already received their input? Because they may have input beyond what's asked in the three questions. But the same three questions are being asked at the forum. 
and you can elaborate in the comments, comments. On, the survey. Yeah, on the survey you can so why would we say also come to the forums give us just a chance to let them know when they are when and where they are and if you'd like to come and hear further or pass it on to somebody else right they could share it with so, other yeah. people I don't think there's any harm yeah well no harm you know if we I get, like I said earlier, if we've already received their information, are we stacking it by having them come and receive their information again? So, mm -hmm. but anyway, go ahead. Oh, okay. Some people like to come to all of them. I was going to say, some people, uh, they, they do. And we, we see some people come to everything that we have. Um, yeah, but do we encourage that by putting it on the link? Or would they just see that and say, okay, I'm going to go to those? They probably would go to it anyway. It just, it, you know, it depends. It's just... <clears throat> yeah. Kind of just a judgment call. Yeah, it just seems to me that we're encouraging them to come again and uh, get the information they, they, again. People like to go and see and make sure that everything's on the up and up. And they'll go. You know, they don't need... We did this, trust me, on our peer deal. I mean, people go, gave us your input, you're done with well, that part of it, but they show up at all the meetings. And this, this line of question questioning makes me think how are we going to advertise those community forums mm -hmm. having it on the survey is another touch point or are we going to send another e-blast after we send out the survey link saying mm -hmm. or along with it. the survey links you can say you have an opportunity to participate in these and the survey and, you know. I mean it's our intention to share the, the survey obviously on our social media on our website um, we can certainly send it through School Messenger if needed. And as far as the community forums, um, we would put that also on our social media, on our website, when share it with the traditional media. And I think the traditional media will definitely share those um, input sessions with the, with the community as well. As well as the foundation using their, yes. their area. <clears throat> So we're going to go ahead and put the link and, and tell them the forums are here. Come to the forums too. Just, uh, I don't know, it's it just more like, you know, uh, you know it, you're welcome to join us at community forums. I don't know exactly what the language would be, but just to provide the information at the end of the survey. Thank you. Thank you for participating. Okay. Alrighty. The more, the better. As he said, it's not absolutely scientific so how it's weighted isn't you know, uh, where okay. it's our discretion to <laughs> I just don't think it's it. necessary but I'm okay everybody else wants it I'm good so we'll move on <laughs> we don't need to beat this so are we down to job descriptions now yes alrighty so let's talk about job descriptions we, um, we understand that before we uh, determine what the qualifications are we're going to go ahead and see what the results of our work is, uh, and then we'll, and I, I appreciate the board doing that, uh, and then, then we'll set the qualifications. But uh, I believe I just want to make sure that board members don't have any other questions about the job description um, while we're while we're here. Are there any questions? Okay, Mr. Cole. The. Uh, I guess I just need clarity on the one of the bullets that says recommends and executes minimum standards relating to the operation of the school. What is that really saying? I read them, most of them make sense. They're pretty straightforward. They seem to align with. Does that exist somewhere else? And then we had to include it there. Or I mean, what, what does that mean to y'all? And good question. Because it's kind of a, a a very odd wording, and. You see the bullet under mm -hmm. essential yeah. responsibilities. Yeah. Recommends and executes minimum standards relating to the operation of the school. Well, Chair, may I? Oh, may I? Yes. Um, so this is a strange, um, I won't say that, so that's the incorrect word. It's a unique job description mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because the superintendent of schools, he or she is a constitutional officer. Right. So the Florida Constitution and Article 9 speaks about the duties of the superintendent. The Florida legislature has elaborated on that greatly through multiple statutes to define what the duties and responsibilities of the superintendent are. 
And so on top of that, when you have an appointed superintendent, as we do in Pinellas County Schools, you also have a contract with your employee, the superintendent. And that will further define what the roles and responsibilities of the superintendent are. So th this is the only job description you have that is really subservient to the Constitution, statutes, and a contract. So uh, <laughs> I'm not saying you shouldn't have a job description, but, um, but. <laughs> and, and there is, you do have a policy that talks about changes to certain portions of this have to be board approved. So if you make certain changes, it'll have to come back to a regular board meeting for a vote. But I, I suppose I would just give you this word of, of advice. I wouldn't necessarily get hung up on words that are and bullets that are in here, okay. because this is going to be fourth in the line of documents that tell you what superintendents need to do. The Constitution, statutes, and a contract, and then there's this. I'm curious what the advertisement documents look like. What are we sending out? Because that's what we're working on here, right, is what, is, what are we sending out to advertise for this position if it's, you know, not this? Question, would, we no, I wouldn't send no. this out. No, we, we would we would not send it out there uh, as Mr. Kuberski is saying there are many districts that don't have a job description for the superintendent they they rely on the statute uh, and the contract of the superintendent because some and some school board attorneys say you're better off relying on that than a job description um, but we would just be sending out the qualifications uh, on our on our one page advertising John you can pick up on that right really we come up but most of your and we'll talk about your advertisement venues at our March meeting uh, but these advertisement venues that are really productive they have uh, job postings that you really kind of cut and paste from your ad into their job posting so our what we refer to as our one page ad we would start off and work with your community relations department for a paragraph that just it's it promotes Pinellas County your your first paragraph then we basically get into the minimum and or preferred qualifications for the position uh, of course your uh, application deadline what your application packet will contain and we'll address that with the board at the March meeting um, information you submit with your uh, application your application process and well again we'll talk about this at our March meeting but do you want your HR department to receive applications uh, we have received them ourselves uh, through FSBA and upon a complete application in your case then I would send that to Kathy so after the first week of the job posting if we have five complete applications I would get those to Kathy and then she would send those out to the board members after the board members receives them then the next day they're posted to the web portal uh, but back to our question the advertisement is really developed and the things from the community that we would like to see in the ad would be the minimum qualifications and any preferred qualifications you as a board might have and also the uh, qualities and characteristics that the board feel are very important in their next superintendent. That's something I'm interested in seeing is sort of a, a template document yes. of that, of those boxes that we are working yes. over yeah. this next month as we hear input. Those yes. are the boxes we're looking to infill. So right. I would Correct. love to have that template at some point so that that is the way my brain will have that. We'll be the ones filling in the information. Right, right, right. Yeah. right. right. So an empty template just right. so I know what the categories are working on. Mm -hmm. yes. Just as a like, clarification, I think for Mr. Kaberski, mm -hmm. what's the difference between this, the statutes, and then the contractual agreement? Well, I, I mentioned the hierarchy there, yeah, right? So, I mean, just you don't have to be a lawyer to know. I mean, you can't conflict with what's above you. Well, obviously, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but the, the, the Constitution is very brief. Okay. The statutes that have been passed elaborate in greater depth as to what the roles and responsibilities are of a superintendent. Mm -hmm. The contract really 
they refer sometimes to the uh, roles and responsibilities, and in fact, Dr. Gregos does, and I would anticipate the next superintendent's agreement speak to that somewhat. Um, but the contract is more focused upon, you know, the specific relationship between the board and the superintendent, compensation, leave, insurance, you know, more HR type things um, than necessarily here's what we need you to do as a superintendent because that's already governed by Florida law. Is that contract negotiated between the board and the new applicant, or is that done, kind of presented more or less as a bargaining between the new applicant and HR, and then it comes to us? No, no, no. I negotiate you, okay. the contract on behalf of the board okay. uh, with the person that you select. So I, I believe I saw in there you would eventually vote to make an offer to and select a person mm -hmm. uh, pending uh, successful contract negotiations okay. and then presuming we have successful contract negotiations that contract would come to the board and that would be your ultimate step of, of hiring your new superintendent Thank you. Thank you. Okay. anything else at what point in the process do we see that do we review that it's on our timeline is it on your timeline yeah, yeah. I see contract negotiations begin. Then the board will approve it, either in May or June, depending on how long it takes. May, June 2022, board meeting approved contract. Mm -hmm. yeah, we, go ahead. On May 2nd, we have a provision in there where method process for selection of superintendent and contract negotiated items process and other items is needed. So what we normally will do, and I don't think anybody else does this but us, we actually usually will start with the current contract that Mr. Grego ha Dr. Grego has because people are somewhat familiar with that. And we'll work with the attorney and go through the provisions of that, and then normally it's a copy is given out to the board members, and then the board members can have a, a discussion on it, on those items. And so even before the person is selected, you kind of have an idea, and. And the, and the attorney also has an idea on, on, on the contract. Mm -hmm. It's also mentioned the week of the 18th. Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. But that won't be the final contract. That'll right. be Correct. kind of the starting point right. for the conversation. Right. The final contract comes to us right. at the board meeting where it says approval of the contract. Yes. Yeah. It okay. works out far better when the, all the board members have an opportunity ahead of time to discuss it and see it uh, <coughs> even before the person is selected rather than just waiting till the end and all of a sudden here's a contract, take a look at it. That causes a lot of back and forth. The way we try to do it this way is it makes it a, usually a very smooth process. Thank you. Okay. Have we finished discussing the job description? I was just going to ask that question. Is there anything else with the job description? Okay. Will this come to us? At a board meeting for approval to vote on? This is your current job description that's been board approved. So if the board wants to make changes to uh, certain areas, then it would need to come back in front of the school board for approval. Or it could stay as is and you could you could complete this entire process with this as is. And the reason why I ask because is because the link that I have to the job description online, this is a different version. Mm -hmm. So this isn't the same version of the job description that's online. These have additions. This is, I mean, the, the one online was written in 2012, and the titles that the superintendent supervisors are different. This one, when we published it, we just put in the current, and that's why they're underlined. All the underlined ones are the current titles of the positions the superintendent supervises. So we can do whatever the board wishes. We, we can either just leave it alone, we can bring just this revised job description the next time with the correct titles. And, the, and there are also technical changes from the one online and the one here. So I just want to make sure. We're doing everything that we... Well, to make the changes that are underlined, it would come back to the board. Yeah. Thank you. So, and if, you, if you have other changes you'd like to see, just let me know and I 
and some of the technical changes haven't been highlighted, but they are present. Um, like making things gender neutral and some different terminology, it's changed. Okay, so are, are you asking that this come before us to vote on and then make sure it's the one that's on line? Yes, if we're going to follow the one that we have today, we need to make sure we vote on it and it's uploaded online. Okay. Or are you asking for us to make changes to this today and then bring it forward? The way the document okay. is presented, it has the recommended suggestions that I would want. Okay. So do we then bring this to the next board meeting? Yes. Sir. And vote on it and then connect it? Or yes. do we can we connect it as a draft? So that as people are looking at it, they're looking at kind of where we're starting, or is that not something we can do? We have job descriptions on the workshop next week. We can add this one to it, bring the correct red line version that includes the changes you're talking about, Ms. Edmund, and then you can approve it at the next board meeting and it'll be in time for the inviting them up. So. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Just to clarify, though, that they're as in asking you, like, if there will, wouldn't there also potentially be uh, I see the need for it. I see the point. I agree. It needs to come up again because it's not accurate. But potentially through contact, contract negotiations, and then subsequently, should the new superintendent decide to do some reorgs or, you know, change title names or, or re-jump, it'll be all revisited again potentially, right? Like even as this, even the underlined are a couple of the new positions that have been created since mm -hmm. the superintendent. So. It will, it's an evolving document because of the nature of this job. So we could also give thought to eliminating it um, because it's not a necessary document. Our contract is supersedes it. And, and things that are, I mean, when you read your con his contract, the superintendent's kind of now even it has, you know, his authority for cabinet and authority you know so there's there's a lot in the contract that is much more in depth so the other suggestion could be because it is always changing right who reports to them if you readjust your the other suggestion could be to eliminate this right you do not legally need to have a superintendent of schools job description so because then it can, will continue to need to be updated frequently every time there's a new cabinet or a change to cabinet's name or a change to that job description, which happens periodically when we have new hire or new folks brought in. And so giving careful attention to the contract, which is, has more credence, rather than spending the time on ensuring alignment with that or accu most current accurate documents. So what would your suggestion be as our legal counsel on that? My legal suggestion to you would be that that's a board decision. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you do not legally need... attorney who wants to keep his job. <laughs> we do not legally... You do not legally need this. If, if anything, you could simply have... I, I mean, you, I could prepare an agenda item to repeal this, work through Ms. Texel, and then give the rationale that I gave here as to why you don't need it. That's one option. Another option is to have a job description that is everything, all the I's dotted and the T's crossed and have to change it every time there's a new position. Um, and the third option would be to have a job description and just have it be bare bones and just say, this is the position in the school district. It is hired by the, it reports to the school board, but the, the, the roles and responsibilities are defined by contract and law. Yeah. Just have to do this I think that's an interesting yeah, I think if I was going to do a, uh, go ahead. No, no, it's okay. Sorry. No, I think if we were going to do a job description, I, the bare bones one is what I would want, and identify where the authority comes from. However, I don't know, and I, I haven't thought it all the way through, is now the time to pull a job description and do away with one? I don't think so. And I think we would be in line with what we've been doing to have one. 
And if the next person comes on and needs to do some reorganization, then that conversation can be had at that point. I think having this updated version to include the great work that Dr. Grego, um, as well as staff, have done kind of sets the precedence of what we're trying to do here. And having the bare bones leaves a lot of uh, things for interpretation. And Dr. Corbett just mentioned it would be simple. We have it here, bring it to the workshop, boop, go to the next step. Dr. Bogle, do you mind if I ask you and Ms. Messina what other districts do? Well, it's actually probably about 50-50. Uh, some have job descriptions and some don't for the, for the reason that, that, um, that you're uh, bringing forward. Um, I, what I don't want is for this to be any kind of red herring. I mean, it, it should it definitely, and I do see at the bottom it says, you know, complies with Florida school statutes and regulations of the State Board of Education. So, I mean, as long as there's some phrase in here that people also understand, I mean, we're we are in a superintendent search. People are going to care about this document, and they mm -hmm. should care about this document, and they should care about our advertisement and the qualifications we're looking for. They should care about our contract. So I don't want to make a big issue over some document that we're all actually sitting here saying doesn't really matter. You know, it doesn't. Every it's superseded by everything. And so as long as we put something in here that says here's a lot of things that are some responsibilities, and by the way look at the contract, look at the Constitution, look at the statutes, because this is not all inclusive. But if we want to update the titles and just have something that is, you know, at the top of the stack of all the job descriptions we have, then administratively, I think that's fine. We just, again, want to acknowledge that there's a lot that is not in here. And that this is not really driving our process, is what I'm hearing. I think that the what was brought up by Dr. Carr and that it's a continuously a need to update, is there a way, do we need to list all of these specifically? Could we just say, you know, Cabinet. supervises and, and make a blanket statement there where yeah. we don't need to be updating this every time that there's a title change or, every t you know, to eliminate the need for staff to have to constantly re revisit this document or for us to constantly revote on it, not to eliminate the document, but just simplify it. Is that, can we do that? Yeah, because these things are identified in the Constitution and in the law. Anyway, right. we didn't come up with these necessarily. Right. And so, you know, to state where the authority comes from, yeah, I to, think is... We don't need to list out every single yeah. administrative yeah. title, maybe. It, you know, it's like, just to say, supervise mm -hmm. administration. Sounds like we're going with the third option. Mm -hmm. I could speak to the origin typically of where superintendent job descriptions come from. It typically would happen when a school district changes from an elected to an appointed superintendent. Um, and then the job description just shows and demonstrates the clarity of the superintendent reporting to the board. And in some cases, some of the pieces in the job description that districts find important have to do with communication to all board members, making sure like part of the job description is communicates with board members, that sort of thing. So that's that's kind of where the origin starts. And your district may have done that originally when you changed from elected to appointed and then just kind of carried it forward. But that doesn't mean that all districts, even those that are appointed, have job descriptions. All right, so what is everyone's pleasure? If something's going to be brought back probably at our workshop, what will think, it be? I think it's clean to have it in the fact that it's, we have job descriptions for everything else. So again, it's sort of at the stack, what Andrea just said about how it talks about reports to and supervises, you know, it's good. It just sort of starts that chain of command. And so if we can keep the supervises in a way that we don't have to update it all the time, and I, I look to you all to suggest something for that. Um, you know, Dr. Corbett, I don't know if you could suggest some language in there that, you know, about the leadership cabinet or whatnot. And then, you know, we could look at the major function, we can look at the basic list of responsibilities, and then just make sure we include some kind of bullet that acknowledges the other places where the responsibilities are enumerated. Then it's an administrative document, we make sure the one that's online mirrors this one. 
So it, administratively, it's clean to have one because mm -hmm. it's the first one in the stack, right? <laughs> so. Yeah. And I would start off by saying, Constantine, Bill, go ahead. I really like what you're saying because I think, and uh, Mr. Kapersky can, can clarify that, you know, the, the visit and clarify the, it's the, the Constitution, the State Board rules, and other areas and put that in there. And that's the authority granted to the superintendent and then make this more general. I think it's a good, good compromise. So I'm hearing a, a majority of the board that we will bring back a job description for the workshop next week. Is that right, Dr. Corbett? Correct. Um, that has much more scaled down, but it will still be a job description. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Very good. All right. Anything else with the job description? All right. Now we're on the timeline. Oh, John. John's got it. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Um, you should have a uh, draft uh, timeline in your packet of materials. Mm -hmm. And if I could just very quickly run run through this, of course we're here uh, today to kind of run through this uh, board work session. Uh, again, Dr. Vogel and I will be here tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock and uh, tomorrow afternoon at 3.30 for our focus group with the administrators on uh, site here and then also our school-based administrators in the afternoon. Uh, February the 15th, uh, which we have an agenda item for our pre-search uh, interview with the board, and that is uh, 8 o'clock uh, time, and I apologize for not having that time on there, but it's uh, 8 o'clock. Our community forums, uh, Kathy just gave us an update. What I will do, again, to kind of, again, uh, bring this uh, document to a little more specificity, uh, I'll rework uh, the timeline when I, I get home tomorrow, uh, tomorrow this evening and um, put in the specific locations and the times uh, for our community forums. I'll also add the uh, dates and times for our instructional and support staff focus groups. And I think we're still kind of working through uh, the potential to have a student uh, focus group with Kathy. So if we have any uh, more information on that soon, I'll update that as well. Um, our online survey, I think we did uh, more or less agree or come to consensus earlier that the dates for the online survey will be February the 15th through February 25th. And that would be followed by the week of February the 28th uh, as early as possible to submit the online survey results to all board members. Um, the week of March 7th, um, we have another board work session scheduled, uh, if that's appropriate with the board, uh, to discuss the items listed to the right. Um, and I wondered, um, Madam Chair, if you wanted to, to maybe set, can we set a specific date today, or is it something I should just work with Kathy on to kind of come up with? There are a couple of sh workshops that we have during the week of here, and I don't know if y'all want to try to finalize a date specific today, or maybe just have Kathy get back with me after y'all have had some chance to look at yeah. your current schedule. Probably better right now while everybody has their calendars in front of them. So the week of March 7th, that is the second week of March, uh, of course the 7th being a Monday. We have a workshop on the 8th, but we have also said that we don't want to necessarily tie it with something else. So, what other days are available for people? We look at March. March. 7, 8, 9, 10, or 11. About the 9th. I, I can't on the 9th. I could the 10th or the 11th. Okay. If that, if that could work. Okay, let's look at the 10th. We have student rights and responsibilities at 1 o'clock or 1130. Okay, we can do it before then. How long would we need? How long of a meeting is it? Are we looking at an hour, two hours, what? Uh, I would certainly say, Dr. Bowden, no more than two hours. Okay. Probably an hour, hour and a half. So how about 8.30 on the 10th? that work for everybody? 8.30 on the 10th? Going once? Going twice? 8.30? 8.30 on the 10th. Yes. 
Okay. Yeah. The 10th of March, not April. My calendar flipped. Maybe, uh, Madam Chair, just a technical question. Uh, for example, uh, the board would be determining the minimum and preferred qualifications. Is that an item that would require specific board action or just through your consensus? I don't know if, if is that, I don't know if it needs to be a special board meeting as compared to a work session. I think we could reach consensus on those. Or do you think well, we have to vote on it? Your job description policy says you need to take action on minimum qualifications. So I, I would apply that by analogy in this realm to say that you need to take action. Okay. Because you couldn't do that for an area superintendent, for example, so then why, how could you do it for the superintendent? Mm -hmm. okay. But we can so we, we notice it to be a special action meeting. Or we could do it on the 8th. So we could have, but well, but we could do the, do the workshop with a specially called meeting afterward. Mm -hmm. Sure. And then just codify whatever our decisions have been with the vote. That's right. Okay. On the same day, you're saying? Yeah. So we have a work yeah. session on the on March 10th at 8:30, and then we can notice a special board meeting for action at 10 o'clock, mm -hmm. or immediately following. Okay. Right. So we're sticking with the 8:30 work session, and then the mm -hmm. board action follows. Okay. I'll be giving. It's only a two hours. If we do a meeting afterwards, that would be. Yeah, but if it's only that one item, we should be done in time. Okay. Yeah, that meeting afterward isn't going to yeah, take an hour. Yeah, it shouldn't it's take, take five minutes. We hope right. not. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you. And then moving to the uh, next page, uh, March the 7th, 14th. I'm sorry, March the 14th. Uh, that we'll, we will be prepared by that day to post the advertisement. Uh, and we would have the advertisement period closing on April 13th. So that is a month advertisement. Um, most, schools, most school districts are advertising for a 30-day window. Uh, some have gone 60 days. Your ad venues, the minimum they have for posting an ad is 30 days. And honestly, I think our experience has been uh, candidates who are uh, serious about moving forward and, and advancing or moving to Pinellas County, they're going to know uh, mm -hmm. about the vacancy. The other thing that you will see is that during the first three weeks of this period, you will receive some applications. In the last three to four days, you'll get... Yes. Yes. So if you're comfortable with that, that would be our advertisement period. Uh, the week of April the 18th, I, I would first need to ask the board if the board is going to say receive, and I'll just make this number of 35 applications. Does the board want to identify a group of from that 35 that would be looked at as semi-finalist? To where you then might want to work with uh, FSBA to have those say you identify eight or nine semi-finalists or six or seven semi-finalists. You have that group of say six, six, seven, seven to eight respond to a couple of written uh, questions to see how their writing skills are and then respond to two or three questions video, uh, via video. So you can see the person in front of a camera. Those then come in and I put in some time for that to occur. After you get their written responses and their video responses, then the board would meet to determine, okay, who are our finalists out of these six to eight semi-finalists to bring in for interview. Your finalists can be two, three, four, five, it doesn't, you know, we're not looking at specific numbers, but I have kind of put in two dates here, or, or these two weeks, for the board to have that time frame and option to identify semi-finalists from your total application pool, and then after that, have a couple of activities for those semi-finalists, and based on that, you would come back again to identify your finalists to bring on site 
for your on-site interviews. So I guess maybe two questions if the board would like to move forward with semi-finalists and then finalists. Could you uh, give us two dates for the week of April 18th and the week of May 2nd that we could uh, conduct those two activities? Does this preclude us from saying, when we get down to it, that these are really the only four that we're interested in, and let's just bring them in from interviews? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. That, we could do that if right. we wanted to. That's fine. Okay. Th this, I, I just put this in as a... Placeholder. Placeholder, yes, ma'am. Perfect. Okay. Because, because when you don't allow for it, you can get behind schedule real quick. Right. So we're looking at the week of, so we're looking at the week of April 18th. Again, we have a workshop on the 19th and the rest of the week. And, and Dr. Vogel just mentioned Easter is the 18th, Easter, Easter Monday. Oh, yeah. Okay. So we're looking at Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday of that week. Mm -hmm. Anybody have a preference? Friday is Earth Day. <laughs> Friday is Earth Day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so are we to avoid Friday? Is that what you're yeah. saying? Yeah. Just trying to throw that out there. It's on my yeah. yeah. There's also a meteor shower that night. <clears throat> That's right. Now we picked Thursday for the last time. Or th is Thursday a good day? I was just going to say, I, Thursday morning is the only time I have a conflict. That's oh, it's the only time you have a conflict? Conflict. Okay. Yeah, so any time but Thursday morning. I do too for the data system. Okay. How about Wednesday? Or Thursday <laughs> yeah. We could do Earth Day. Thursday afternoon. Just have to. Wednesday the 20th or Thursday afternoon? Wednesday. Or Earth Day. Wednesday, I think it's earlier in the day. Wednesday, Thursday. Wednesday? Yeah. Everybody okay Wednesday? Mm -hmm. Okay. Pick a time. It's 9 30. of the honors breakfast. It is. Oh. So, so, but that's over by 8 39 o'clock. We, we may be switching that honors breakfast. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll still set it late just in case. Yeah, we, we could, I think we're going to be switching the day to that because the magnet schools are being recognized. I want to be at both. Uh, so how about nine or ten? Nine. What time? Nine o'clock. Here, nine. nine. Okay, nine o'clock for everybody. Nine. And this is a two-hour. April the eighteenth. No, twentieth. I'd, I'd leave two hours. Wednesday the 20th from 9 to 11. Um, may I also suggest that that one, because you're identifying semi-finalists, serve as a work session immediately followed by a meeting so that you can codify those decisions? Do we, we don't need to do that for the finalists, do we? You don't have to do that. By if you're going to be saying that these are our finalists, I think it needs to be a vote by the board. Mr. Superintendent, would you weigh in on this one? No, I, I've never <laughs> heard of that, but David. Yeah, I, I don't think you need to do it. <laughs> I mean, All right, I'll, I'll refer to your... So you're going to take a vote on who you hire. hire. Yeah, that right. you do. But if you okay. want to, you may. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> I will defer to your attorney. I mean, taking action would then foreclose everybody else who applied and then you could send out those letters and say thank you very much, but I don't think it's legally required. Thank you very much, Luz. Okay. Also, I mean, what you're saying is that we're going to move forward. It doesn't mean you can't go back for right. some, and so sometimes you have this natural division point, and you say, well, let's for now we'll go there for a half week. We're not. We're disappointed. We come back to it. So. I don't know whether I'd want to vote because then you totally excludes it, but you still can people know who you're moving forward with. I've never seen that to be a vote. Okay. That well, doesn't mean it just can't be. But let's just do the workshop then. Work session. And uh, work session. I mean the work session, yes. And um and, yeah, on the twentieth and not have a meeting afterwards since we don't have to. We decide to change it. We can. We have enough time. We can certainly do that. Later. Okay. Did everybody hear that? If we decide to change it, we have plenty of time to do so, and it can be done. 
But right now, let's just move forward with that. All right. What time is that? Nine o'clock on April okay. 20th. All right. Now you had another. Yes, ma'am. The week of May 2nd. I think that's still before your graduations. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't have a workshop on the third. Correct. Right. Tuesday the third work? Yeah, we work. Yep. Yeah, that was easy. Tuesday, Tuesday. What, what time? Nine o'clock. Mm -hmm. We're used to that. Okay. Which day is it? The second? The third. The third. May third. Tuesday. Okay. May 3rd, 9 o'clock. And that's how long? Is that another two hours just in case? Mm -hmm. And 9 to 11. Because that, yes, probably two hours, because that is one, one topic would be your contract negotiation discussion items as well, so that might add a little time to it. Okay. All right, anything else? Uh, a member of the dates, um, May 11, 12, and 13. Uh, typically, we put the 11th for any out of area candidates to come into the area. Uh, the, we'll, and we'll talk with you at, a, at one of our work sessions about the on site interview process. And, and what we would like to have you consider would be say, on that Thursday, well, all your finalists come in on a Wednesday the 11th. On Thursday the 12th, you might consider having, that's when you would have your board as an entire body interviewing each finalist for an hour and a half. While you're interviewing, say, finalist A, let's say you have three finalists. Then finalist B and C could potentially be doing school community tours uh, with either staff or some community business leaders. We can talk about that a little later. You might want to consider having kind of a community meet and greet that evening, Thursday evening. And then on Friday, uh, this is kind of you know higher level uh, for Thursday, and on Friday, if you would like, you can have an individual, one board member, one finalist, one-on-one -on -one interview, which would be just your personal interview with each finalist. I think that's important. Out of the sunshine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that would be out of sunshine. If, if I may just jump in, the evening of May 12th, the Thursday evening is Walker's Rising Star. don't know that that matters, but I'm just going yeah, to it does. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we all know that. What is it? Walker's Rising Star. Walker's Rising Star is on the 12th. I don't have that on the calendar. Hmm. Well, it's a Rising Star. <laughs> yeah. Do we what, know? what kind of activity yeah. is Jeff, that? Jeff can introduce him. Walker. Here's a new Walker's Rising Star. <laughs> it's a, um, a, a concert slash competition oh. with our students um, performing arts. What time is that event? That's at 5 a cool. Oh, I don't know if it starts at 5, but it starts, it's in the evening of the 12th. The evening part, usually the program itself usually starts around 7. Yes. Okay. Hmm. I'm just trying to figure out if there was a way to somehow combine before that event or something. I don't. I don't know. Well, we, yeah, people we, have to buy tickets to the event, so maybe not. Uh, gotcha. If it would uh, please the board, potentially, then you could have the finalists come in on Sunday the eighth, and then if you don't have anything, you can have your interviews on the Monday, and then the one-on-ones on Tuesday. We have a school board, board meeting. meeting on Tuesday. Okay. And I know your graduations are the next week. Right. And I, you know, nothing, we, we just tried to have yeah. this schedule yeah. where you would be finished prior to graduations. John, what if the, what if the applicants arrived on Tuesday the 10th yeah. and they did board interviews on the 11th and the one-on-ones on the 12th? Yeah. Much better. That evening of the 11th would be the meet and greet, which would not conflict with the Rising stars. Right. Where should we? Okay. 
Everybody? The date. What, let's go through that again. They'll John. come in on the 10th. On the 11th, 10th. we'll have the board interview and evening meet the community. 12th individual interviews. Yes, and where when does it turn around, Breakfast? No? It's that morning they left. We have to schedule. Okay, so we can schedule yeah, yeah, after the turnaround breakfast. Yeah. Maybe um, the turnaround breakfast can turn breakfast. Yes. <laughs> we could only hope. Yeah. We'll be uh, where are we going to have the meet yeah. and greet at? Where would the location be? We talked about having it at um, P Tech Clearwater. Okay. We talked about maybe um, having it at the foundation if they were available. We could have it. And in Ruth Ecker, Sharon at Ruth Ecker also volunteered their facility. Just so you know, I spoke with her this week. Okay. Would you Would you please repeat the date? Yeah, let's go through that again. Thank candidates you. arrive. What the, on the tenth? Okay. okay. Tenth. On May tenth, candidates arrive. Okay. On the eleventh, we do the board interview. That's all board members interviewing all of the candidates. All right. And then also the evening community. Yeah. And then on the 10th, 12th, individual interviews with the board members. Or board members with individual, right. meeting with one. individual board members. And then we have the, we we, everybody can go to the Rising Stars and that night. Rising Stars that evening. Excellent. I'm assuming on the 11th, that's three different interviews. Maybe right. five, or maybe how many, two, whatever. How many whatever. there are? Yes. Right. But they're not all there together. No. <laughs> no the panel. No, no, right. Right. <laughs> okay. So that's the whole day. Right. On the 11th. Right. Okay. Go. For you guys, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Really for the 11th and 12th, it would be wise to kind of plan the whole day. Thank you. Yeah. You know, it may end up being four hours, yes. you know, but plan on the whole day. Thank you. Then the 17th is we have a special school board meeting. Is that what you're saying on this timeline? Yes. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So this because is special. That, that, yeah. I mean, I just put that in. Most boards like the the very first of the next week is to go ahead and make their decision. Um, and not wait until the 24th. That that's, never mind. Never mind. That's not a nope. Not a board meeting. Well, that finishes okay. it before the graduation. So. Yeah. Right. So we do a board morning board meeting on May 17th. Mm -hmm. yeah. For one item. That's an action and item. And one item only, yes. Does that have 10 a.m.? Are you discussing it at that point or are you discussing it on? Yeah, they'll be discussing it. 11. So We're there's no action. We're discussing it on the 17th? What did she say? I, yes, I said that at that meeting you'll be discussing and making a vote. Yes. Okay. Okay. So we'll come. We will have a recommendation for that meeting prior to the seventeenth. We're not going to come together at a board meeting on the seventeenth and then discuss it and debate. Yes, yes we are, and then we, we could. Why would we not come with a recommendation or? So maybe you want to have a work session on the 17th before the meeting? Is that what you're saying, Carol? That's what I'm asking, yes. Yes. Yeah, we have a workshop. Um, it doesn't matter what you call it at that point. Right. Just call it a regular meeting. Yeah. We don't have to do the meeting on Tuesday either. We could have a work session on Tuesday the 17th and have the meeting on the 19th. Graduation. Graduation start. Okay. Why don't we just do one one day? Have a work session for maybe two hours, eight to ten, and then ten o'clock. Just have our specially called school board meeting and make a vote. Either way, if you want to do it at a board meeting, that's fine. If you want to have a, a recommendation coming to the board meeting, if we're having to 
publicize it all the week ahead. I'm, I'm getting into the logistics of it. No, but you also Thank mentioned you. that, if you don't mind my speaking, I, just, no, I, I mean, when you not. say a recommendation, this is not a recommendation that the superintendent's going to be making. No, that's right? true. That's it's a true. recommendation. Somebody's going to have to make a motion. Right. Someone's going to have to second it. That's going to happen sometime. Let's just do it at the board meeting. It'll be easier. Yeah, mm -hmm. let's just do it at the board meeting. Downstairs on the dais? Yeah. So no work session ahead of time. Just go straight into the meeting. Someone will make a recommendation and we vote on it. Up, down, whatever. If it gets voted down, you get a second one in there. Okay, so that's 10 a.m. And we'll walk you through that meeting. I mean, because you all are involved in the discussions, typically the board will kind of hand it over to us and we'll walk you through all of that. And at some point we will say, does anyone have a motion kind of thing? So the meeting will start at 10, right? Yes. Okay. You, I'm sorry, did you say the meeting will start at 10? Yes. That's normally Thank our you. school board time. As we get closer, uh, we'll go, we'll review that whole process with you. And so you'll feel comfortable with how we're, we recommend going forward. Okay. We okay. have it as one of the items for discussion on May 3rd. Got it. Okay. Anything else on the timeline? No, ma'am. I think that's good. And I will certainly update this and get it to Kathy for her approval. And then, uh, We'll be good to go. Thank you, ma'am. All right, Kathy, you'll send all those dates out to all of us so that we yes. are definitely all on the same page. Yes. Yes. Well, we just have all the dates that were discussed today, the, the community forums, the staff focus right. group, and all the other dates. We'll come Perfect. to everybody. Anything else? And board members? Will you give us the calendar alerts for the work sessions? Yes. Okay. And then... Um, We've been receiving some emails from teachers regarding input, and since we have Ms. Messina on the line, can you share what other counties did as it relates to their unions, or just so we could have that discussion in the sunshine? Certainly. Um, on In any given district, how the union interacts in a process like this is going to be unique to that district and so we've seen everything from zero participation at all where the district has viewed uh union members whether it's support or teacher as just a member of the general public and they can participate in the same way the general public can up to and including perhaps um, the union some unions have hosted a lunch for the candidates, maybe on the day of the individual interviews or on the day of the board interviews. We've seen, um, typically we would expect that the union during the school board meetings, when you have superintendent search on the agenda, very likely will have some input and they would come to the podium and uh, share their thoughts like other citizens would, but that 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 would be a, something that would not at all be surprising. Uh, many times when you get down to the semifinalist or even finalist level, unions will reach out to their peers in the counties where the finalists are currently working and gather some input about the relationship that um, the applicants have with the unions. And it's very interesting because what we find is even when applicants uh, maybe don't always agree with the union, the unions in our experience have been very honest about, we don't always agree, but this person is respectful and this person has worked with us and this person has demonstrated um, collaborative willingness, things like that, even if they don't always agree. So it's not, I don't want you to think that it would necessarily be only people who agree with everything that a union agrees with might get a positive um, uh, reference, if you will. But we would expect that the unions, that's what's happened in many other districts, they reach out to their peers in the other districts where the people are currently working, and then they bring that information back and share it with the board. And many times the boards find that information helpful. Um, but any, it, it, it ranges on the scale of full, not full involvement, but 
more involvement to zero involvement and everything in between. Uh, Bill and John, I don't know if you have anything to add to that. We would certainly, we have a, a teacher forum, uh, uh, and we, a teacher focus group, and we have a support focus group, so we certainly hope that the, the presence of those organizations would encourage their members to attend those events. Yeah, we're going to send out to PCTA, PESPA, the Pinellas County Council of PTAs, um, the Administrators Association, all of those, we're going to send um, the information out one day early to them to say please get your members going and, and let them know this is happening and then the next day it will go out to, for example, all teachers. And the next day it would go out to all of the support personnel as well as all parents. We're handling each of those the same way. We don't want just the county council giving input. So we're, we're letting them know and then we're sending it out to all parents. You know, the same, same with each one of those groups. Um, uh, we've been receiving emails saying that um, they want to vote on the superintendent. No, there are seven people that vote on the superintendent. And so, um, you know, I think that's just some people misunderstanding how it, you know, when they're really asking for input, but they're saying they want to vote. So, you know, if we're just letting them know it's, it's your input that we're looking for. So. And Ms. Cook, if I might, just to be very, very clear, the law states very clearly that this is the job, selecting the superintendent in an appointed district is both the job and responsibility and authority of the school board, and that the board should not abdicate that responsibility and authority. Right. I have, just go to go along with that, I do think, though, and, and you illustrated it in some of your examples that you gave, that there is a lot of value in the collective bargaining perspective. So um, as a teacher, right, because we're going to ask all teachers, uh, I think you have, you have one perspective, but then when you've been in the role as a representative for teachers, you have a different perspective of the superintendent and an understanding of characteristics and qualities that are unique to a successful collective bargaining um, and, and what you may be looking for as an association. So I think it would be valuable to consider how we get that from our collective bargaining units because, or some representation from them because they, they do have a unique perspective that's different from, you know, the, a parent, I mean, a, a teacher, a classroom teacher, mm -hmm. because they've been elect, just like we have a different perspective as a board about the district necessarily than other roles and functions. Or I'm sure our collective bargaining group that represents us has a, a different perspective of the association than maybe we do. Mm -hmm. So. You know, and I think when you talk about how they can reach out to their colleagues and get that kind of input, how we receive that from them um, and factor that in and consider it as we are getting down to um, <coughs> semi-finalists and finalists because I think their perspective is valuable and I think going forward we want to have a positive relationship and rapport with our collective bargaining units, I, th I think it behooves us to consider their input on the final lessons and not to abdicate our decision making, but just to gather their unique perspective because of, of, of what they're looking for and what they think would right, be a the same kind of questions yeah. we're asking everyone else if they could potentially ask their membership or, mm -hmm. or share that with us, those same qualities and that we would, you know, integrate that as along with the other folks who have given their input um, and, and weigh it however we see it to be that mm -hmm. of value. I don't know if we want to reach out to them and ask them for those qualities and character, ask them to provide 
answers to those questions like we do we're we're, at, we're asking basically the same set of questions in the focus group in the survey and if potentially we would want to re reach out to those collective bargaining groups not just teacher but maybe even law enforcement the ones the other groups and get input from them about where they see you know and, and then it's coming from them as a collective because that's who they really drive a lot of the decisions and directions of cop, like quality of life, way of work, climate culture amongst the groups they represent or what they're looking for in value and, you know, at least the most highly functioning ones and optimistically that's what we want from those groups. Mm -hmm. Laura? In the online survey option where it has the different, you know, current teacher, former teacher, parent, etc. It says, please mark all that apply. So someone could be a current teacher, a former parent, uh, you know, is this, or that. And the same thing, we could have, you know, member, PCTA, member, SEIU, you know, if we wanted to get that, this would be a way that you could sort that data to see that. I mean, this is one, one way to do that. Um, that might be a good idea. Or just ask way. them, mm -hmm. right? Couldn't we just ask them to provide some of that input? Yeah, you mean in like a separate how? I mean, we have we have all these different forums. So, like, submit a group letter, or how do you mean ask? Yeah, I mean they could they could submit input, that right? Way. Right, mm -hmm. like to, to have a letter answering those questions and then be integrated into our other elements, the, right. the focus groups. I and mean, could you integrate those pieces as well or share those? So, what I mean, do you does anyone see value in that? Or? Dr. Carr, what you're saying is like PCTA would, those members would give to Mrs. Velarde what they see. Our characteristics in a superintendent and then she would write a letter to the board stating this is what we hope or what we would like to see in a new superintendent and then the same thing with SEIU and the police officers yes. right. Should probably do that anyway. right but in the in the format of what we're utilize, utilizing so we can integrate it well you know, so say, we're asking three questions, You're asking right? them to do the same three questions and bring it to us as a board. Right. You know, from PCTA. Oh, they, they take their, take the surveys. Or just at least ask them. Okay. okay. Well, that's kind of why we were sending it out a day early so that they yeah. could contact their members and ask, make sure that, you know, make sure you're filling this out, get the information to us and, and that type of thing. Right. You know, so. It's, it's whatever. We, you know, we obviously want the input from all of them. So. And they have monthly meetings that they could um, make a, a forum of their own and get from their group the information and put it in a document and send it to us. Yeah, they may have things that they want us to know that aren't even on this form. So that, that would give the opportunity for yeah. them yeah. to do that. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. I just thank you very much for providing those examples. I think it's important that whoever decides to pull the audio and hear the discussion, that they know that we are having these conversations. Mm -hmm. Also, I have one last question, and it's about receiving emails. Mm -hmm. So I know we um, provide consensus to make you the point of contact, Mrs. Cook, but are we as a board receiving emails from anyone that you might receive related to the superintendent search no you are receiving the the email that goes between bill vogel andrea messina about what are the dates what are this all the that operationalizing things no you're not getting copies of that and there's a lot of that email going back and forth if I'm receiving anything from a community member, a person, anybody saying, this is what I think about the search, I'm sending it out. I even went through all of my email um, to make sure they were all, and I found one, the one from Maria Scruggs, it was not sent to every board member. 
So, um, it was, wasn't it? It was sent to It just wasn't sent to it the wasn't board sent to, Yeah, it wasn't sent to, to Kathy. So I went ahead and forwarded that to her. Um, but if it's anything that has to do with the qualification, any input, they just want to say, you know, please contact me for whatever, everybody's getting them. We, the whole bunch of them came in on Friday. Um, you know, so if anybody is getting those, and it's coming in just to your name, check and see who else they're being sent to. And if they're only coming to you, if you would send them to Kathy, she'll make sure that all board members get it. So, but yes, all of the personal stuff you're getting. You're just not getting the operational, and they're, you don't want them. There are a lot of those that have gone back and forth. Thank you very much. I yep. just wanted to make sure we, well, I or we all understood that we're supposed to be sharing yep. those individual emails as it relates to superintendent search. Perfect. Thank you. <coughs> don't leave yet. Could no. you, I'm sorry. Could you clarify employee organization involvement, how you want to do that? I heard Mrs. Hines suggest that. I didn't. I want to make sure I understand that whether you're going to contact them or we're going to contact them or how do you want us to? What was the, the yeah. consensus of the board um, on that? We didn't decide who was going to be contact. Who was going to do the contacting? Um, and are we going to? Uh, or was the board going to use the same form and ask them? How, I didn't. I want to make sure I understand the logistics. What I'm thinking we might be able to do is again, just as we were going to send the. All right. information the link out the day before okay. for all of them but we could send out an email to the president of each of the organizations and say you know in addition to this please get your membership to fill out this in addition to that if there's any other information you would like us to consider please you know send it to us then they can determine whether they want to do it with their representatives with their executive committees or however they want to do it within their organization but it would be SEIU, um, it's not PBA anymore, the police, FOP, FOP. 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 it would be PESPA and, and PCTA, that's, it. Um, that's all of them within, yeah. Does he have a, a time, when would we want those letters from the four presidents? Whenever they want to send them in. Because it may determine, they may have but to. But prior to February 28th, when we integrate everything. Yeah. yeah. Okay, prior to February 28th, exactly. we're going to ask it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then. Because it depends on when they all meet. They may not have a meeting in between, but they can well, still they send might, yeah. us. Schedule one. Right. Yeah. Um, they may not. May want to so that's, yeah. however their organization needs to handle it, that would be up to them. I'm not going to okay. start dictating how they do that. Mm -hmm. Would you like to send that out, or do you, would you like us to send it out? Um, I think it'd be nice if you sent it out and then and then it came back to you and it's shared in your report. Mm -hmm. That would be good. We can do that. Okay. Like we integrated would use the same with the format, rest of the information. The same three questions that we have. Same three questions, but asking for additional input. Right. Uh, we're asking for additional information. We're not sending those same three questions out again. I think that okay. email asking for additional information should come either from the board chair. Okay. okay. Or from me, okay. Either one, okay. um, and it's all whoever you all want to Perfect. have do that. That request for additional information, I think, should come from us. Okay. Because it's not part of the survey. They're going to be doing the survey. Yes. Acknowledging that we would like, we mm -hmm. value and would like the input in a consolidated way that can be. Yeah. Considered. Yeah. Excellent. So you want that to come from the board chair? Board chair. Or yes. from okay. Okay, yeah. Kathy, I'll be calling you, working with you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for that clarification. Yeah. No, thank you, because we hadn't clarified it. <laughs> okay. And Ms. Cook, if yes, I could say one more thing, or I hear you guys kind of winding down. Um, you will start to hear all kinds of rumors about internal people who may or may not be interested, external people who may or may not be interested. My recommendation is for all board members to remain as open-minded and neutral as possible for as long as possible. So anytime somebody reaches out to you, thank you for your input. We'll be taking all opinions into account as we move through this process. Anything very generic like that, because um, a lot of times what you hear as rumors, so-and-so is going to apply when the deadline hits that person didn't apply. And so if if you get caught up in who somebody says may or may not be applying, it can really distract board members from, from focusing on 
the true work that's happening here and on keeping your mind open for as many options as might be available when the time comes. Very good advice. Thank you. Anything else before we break? And one more thing, we look forward to the pre-search interview next week. On your attached to your agenda today, there's an item it, that's actually the contents of what we're going to go through next week. It actually says agenda for 2-8, which I'm not sure why it says that, but that's the pre-search interview items. And we look forward to having a detailed discussion um, next week. And I look forward to physically being in the room with you. Yeah, and that's... February 15th at 8 o'clock in the morning. Okay. Yes, ma'am. That's where we're really getting to the strategic plan, too, and your future goals. So you might want to bring that or take a look at that. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we'll get copies of the strategic plan for everybody in case you've already given them away or whatever. So everybody will have one for that meeting. Okay. Anything else? All right. Would you like to adjourn the meeting? All right. I call this. Phyllis County School Board work session to close.